So I've been getting some questions and comments recently regarding the video production and our process behind it for podcast marketing trends explained as well as the podcast roasts that we've been doing uh, to complement this season of podcast marketing trends explained. And so I wanted to do a video walking through our production process as this is something that was one of the big question marks for me going into this project of these kind of what initially was going to be one show and it has now kind of spun off into two, uh, one of which is now fully video. Uh, we're not yet releasing the audio as I'm recording uh, this video. We probably will repurpose all of the video podcast roasts into an audio feed at some point. Uh, but right now, um, at this point, half of the episodes have been video only, which was not something that we had planned on when we started out. Um, but I had a big question mark in my mind going into this, and I was curious how much time and cost and effort would it take to create a useful video show that is engaging, that looks good, that feels professional, that feels like it belongs on YouTube. And uh, one of the learnings for me from this project has been that the bar is actually way, way lower than I had initially realized. And so I do spend quite a bit of time on video production, but it's actually not that much more than editing a podcast standalone. And so this is mostly done in the script. But uh, before we get to that, let's actually start at the start of our process, which is uh, actually in uh, Squadcast. And so this is where everything starts here. And so we um, record our episodes right in Squadcast here, and then we'll typically, there's a few little quirks related to our format. Normally with some shows, uh, you could just select all and just uh, export into Descript right from here. I know some people have had some issues with this for some shows. We've had issues in that uh, screen recordings can't be one click exported into Descript. So regardless of what we need to do, there needs to be some importing on the back end. So usually what I'll do is I'll create the file right from here. This will, uh, so if I click edit in Descript, this will bring both mine and Justin's audio files and video files into Descript, create a new project, start transcribing that. And then what I'll do is I will just download that additional uh, file here and then import it into Descript later and sync it with the, the sequence. So this is where Squadcast is where we, we do all of our recording, got all our files here, and then we bring everything over into Descript. And so if we go into the file here, and this is one that has been already edited. And so essentially what we need to do here in terms of syncing up the screencast or the screen share, I should say, with the uh, video files is up in media. We've got uh, typically actually when when it imports from Squadcast, there will already be the sequence here. And so it'll have mine and Justin's tracks, which when it imports, it'll ask me who's who. Uh, so we'll add the speakers there. Then if we click into this, then here we'll be able to add the additional files. So right now it'll be uh, just this one right here. This was, I think I needed to use the backup as there was some like little glitchy part. Um, so that's this additional video file. Usually there would just be three. Um, and so what we do here is we've got uh, Jeremy, Justin, and then I'll add media and just add a file here. And then uh, once that file has been added, uh, we could like take this, let's just, this is just an example here and add a new track and then we'll add it in the sequence. And so now, because the screen share is the same length, we're uh, by the time we hit record, we're already screen sharing. And so everything is the same length and those will all remain synced uh, regardless of any editing that is done in the uh, timeline here. So we then use uh, Descript to do all of our editing. And so I'll typically go through and uh, I'll do at this point, I'll sometimes do two passes through. I try, it's nice if I can get it to one pass. And if I edit close enough to the date that we recorded, then I have a much better time knowing where we kind of rambled or got off track. I just cut those pieces entirely. Usually our episodes are coming in around 60 minutes. I would ideally like to cut a third of any episode that comes in. I feel like usually you're going to get a much tighter episode um, that probably there's a third of almost any podcast episode ever that is not that valuable. Um, and so that's what I, I tend to aim for. It doesn't always get to that sometimes like it is really condensed and, and really good. And so I cut 10, maybe 15 minutes off of it. Other times uh, it's a bit more than that, um, but it's going to be on an episode by episode basis. And so that's usually my goal in the back of my mind is I'm going in trying to cut as much as possible. And so I try to be, you know, there's lots that I do want to keep in, but I try to be somewhat ruthless. And so if there are things where we've already kind of said things and then we come back and rephrase it later, reiterate it. And this is something that I, I notice all the time 
where one of us will like make some comment and will like build up to this like mic drop moment. And it's like, oh, we should have just stopped there, but we keep talking. We don't have the confidence to like, just let that statement hang in the air where it would really land with the audience. And then we'll kind of like keep rambling on and keep talking down. And so we like reach this peak and then we like wind it down slowly, 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 slowly reiterate what we had already just said, even though we don't need to. And then it's kind of peters out and leads into the next person. And then the next person usually picks up and they say something like, Oh yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. I really like that. And uh, you know, yeah, it makes me think yada, 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 whatever they continue on for 30 seconds. And then they're like, you know, the other thing that makes me think of, And so what I've started doing is just eliminating whatever that mic drop moment was where we should have stopped. I cut it there and then I cut immediately going into, you know, the other thing that makes me think of. And so a lot of times you'll cut three minutes of kind of content that's just filler and the pacing is much punchier. It's just like point and then next point and then it just keeps moving really quickly. It doesn't always work out that way when uh, depending on what is being said, but as much as possible, I try to eliminate some of those transitional moments where it's like winding down and winding back up and try to go from point to point to point to keep things kind of bouncing back and forth and keep the energy up and keep things moving. So that's one of the, the editing tricks that I use. It, it can eliminate a lot of time as well. And I'm always looking, like I said, I am looking to cut as much as possible and kind of only, <laughs> I mean, this is my perspective, probably a listener who is uh, less biased than me could cut even more. But uh, with some of the episodes, I have intentionally tried to cut even half of it all, almost. And so there were some episodes where we went for like an hour, 20, hour and a half on an episode. And I was like, this is like, if I can get this down to 50 minutes, that is is where I'd like to be. And so that's kind of the goal in the back of my mind. And in an ideal world, these roasts are coming in at like 30, 35 minutes. Um, Some of them have been a bit longer uh, recently as well. So it has been tough to kind of keep them down. But that is always my goal. Now, when it comes to the scene, so essentially what I do when I come into Descript, and let's maybe even see, I don't know if I have um, any... Yeah, I don't think I have any new episodes that have not been edited yet. So we can't do anything with a blank slate yet. But essentially, it comes in. There's one scene in Descript here. And what I'll do is we'll go into actions and we'll do add scenes by active speaker. And so essentially, every time the the active speaker changes in Descript, and so you can see it's already um, pieced it all out here between Jeremy and Justin, it's going to change the uh, scene in Descript so that that person is in full screen mode. So when I'm the active speaker, it's uh, me here. When Justin's the active speaker, it's going to be him here. Now, there has been a little bit of, we have uh, developed these scenes here. And so you can see that there's this frame here, which I initially did because before I built out my studio setup, uh, Justin had this really great looking setup and I had like a blank white wall behind me that looked decidedly unprofessional. So what I did to attempt to raise the perceived production quality was I created in Figma these frames, essentially. And so here, this is just like blank space behind uh, in all the white bits here. Um, And so we've got the and I think, uh, well, this one, I've just messed around with it a little bit. This actually should be blank behind there. Um, But we've got the the full screen frame kind of. And then um, we've got, you know, this screen, the meant for screen sharing, and then one person screen sharing plus two of us. Uh, And this is just, you know, whatever is in the full screen, it can be either one of us or both of us side by side, or the full um, uh, screen share that we're doing without either of our faces. And so essentially, this is just the top layer in the script then. And so if we head back here, and if we pull up um, the layers, we'll see that here, this overlay is right here. And if we go into some of the layouts, if we should be one of these. And Okay, so if we turn that off, then we see that the frame has been lost here. So there is essentially there's a few layers here and the background layer is um, just a kind of the gradient background that's part of our branding or part of the part of the podcast marketing trends branding. And then we've got our videos and then we've got this top kind of frame here that um, cuts out all the excess stuff. And to my eye makes it look a little bit more tight, polished, professional. Um, So that's how I set that up there. Now that I have my actual kind of studio set up here, I think it doesn't really need it, but it still adds, I think, a kind of nice touch. um, And it brings some consistency and cohesion to everything because we've got this consistent frame. So as we're switching between, uh, you know, just me and just Justin and the both of us and then um, the, the screen share, we've got a little bit of of 
consistency in those scene changes rather than it being too jarring or anything like that. And especially when we get into screen sharing, as well as our faces, then it becomes nice to have some kind of frame that uh, things don't become too cluttered um, with different kinds of um, visual kind of assets running into each other here. So uh, typically what I'll do is I'll just open up the previous, um, whatever the previous video was, and I'll just copy over that frame um, and place that over top. Uh, and I actually do that before I add the scenes by active speaker so that essentially you kind of bring it in. And if we, we look here, it should, so this is the, here's the frame that the overlay frame right here. I bring that into the first scene when there's just one scene here, I add that and that makes sure the, the frame runs throughout the whole session in Descript. And then I add the, the scenes by active speaker. And then this frame remains through all of those. And so at that point, that will be Justin and I full screen. Um, and so every time we switch speaking, then it's just either my full, my full uh, video here or Justin's. And then as I go through, I add a bunch of um, scene breaks throughout this uh, for a number of reasons, both to hide editing is one of them. And so if there's an edit that happens, that like is uh, restarting a phrase or something like that, it's easier to make the cut. Like you, you don't notice the cut uh, in the video if you had a scene change. And so a lot of times I'll cut to either side by side or then back to solo. And a lot of those I won't. Like there's a way more edits in the video that don't have scene changes associated with them. But I only do it when it's like a kind of very jarring thing or it's been a long time since a scene change already. So covering up edits is one of the reasons I do it. Um, obviously, to get to the screen shares, we need to, to change the scene there. And then the third thing is just to keep the pacing moving. And so especially, I tend to want to front load the uh, the pacing of the editing to be faster in the first 10 minutes or so. And the reason is that with YouTube in particular, I know that people's attention spans are very short and just the fact that they clicked through to watch the video does not mean that they're going to stick around. In fact, most people who click play are not sticking around past the first, you know, 30 seconds or one minute or two minutes. And so I'm trying to keep uh, things moving as quickly as possible with a bunch of scene changes. And so you can see here in this first, you know, couple minutes here, even if we look at what is this, this is like maybe 30 seconds, something like that. So that's about 30 seconds. And we already have, uh, so one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight scenes in the first 30 seconds. So things are moving pretty quickly. Every few seconds, there's a scene change, a cut to something else. Um, that slows down a little bit, but I try to, in my mind, my benchmark is something like three to four scenes per minute, especially in the first 10 minutes. And then it might relax a little bit. I might even be a little bit higher than that in the first uh, 10 minutes. And then as we get past that towards the back half of the episode, then maybe it's like three, two, two or three scene changes per minute. If somebody's going on a long like monologue or something, that's that's good. I'll keep it fully focused on them. Um, or, you know, if I'm feeling it's lagging or something like that, we'll cut back and forth to introduce some different kind of visual energy and momentum to it. So that's how I tend to think about uh, editing and production. And uh, then, like I mentioned, yeah, we've got all these scenes here that are just um, these overlays, these layers that I made in Figma that kind of place them on here and then just position the, the videos behind it and kind of crop them as needed here in Descript. And then the other thing is we do have some templates, which I started using, but I don't actually, now I just basically copy and paste from previous episodes rather than using the templates because the templates in Descript are... A little bit wonky. The ones that I, I do use every time is just this um, this logo template here, which has some animation on the logo kind of zooming in, uh, which for some reason doesn't really copy over nicely from previous episodes. And so that one is at use um, somewhere here, where um, if we play this, then we can see that that is going. So I'll just like add this little space, apply that template there, and we'll also do it again at the end over here and so here again is going to be this logo um kind of increasing in size and so that animation is does come through with the template which is good um and then let's see anything else the other things i also just copy and paste in the music from the previous episode and so i like that because it keeps the consistency of volume I, I am sure that whatever the last episode's volume was of music like we're bringing that into the new one and then that is my reference for what the vocals need to be mixed to is that they're going to uh, show up uh, fitting and sitting right with the music and that you listen from one episode to the next that everything's going to be at the same volume 
So uh, let's see the anything else here. The last thing I do use studio sound on uh, both Justin and my tracks. Usually I tune it all the way up to a hundred and the reason normally I would like to do it less, but I've had some issues where when it's been at less than a hundred, then it has this weird phasey effect where it's kind of like messing with the the vocals and it's, it's perfect when it's at a hundred, it sounds a little studio soundy, which is, you know, maybe a bit over the top to how I would do it if I was mixing this in pro tools, for example, but I think it's fine and it's better than nothing. Um, and yeah, my, my room here is not treated right now. And so uh, studio sound does certainly uh, help with it. There's also my apartment building in the outside can be there can be some noisy stuff uh, around here. My partner Kelly is in her offices behind me. And so oftentimes we can kind of hear each other talking through the walls. Studio uh, sound kind of takes care of all of that. And so yeah, if I was mixing this myself professionally, I would be much more particular about the recording environments and uh, recording at a time when there's not anything else going on outside. But you know, this being uh, real life, um, there's it's not always possible. And studio sound makes it really, really easy to clean that up. Again, the one thing I don't love about studio uh, sound is that it it has a sound that you, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, you just notice like it becomes this kind of generic sound, which is better than like bad audio quality by, you know, a hundred percent. But, you know, the craftsperson in me would love to have, you know, full control over this and to have a show that sounded particular in some way and more intentional and, um, and, and a little bit, you know, not just generic studio soundy, but for the purposes of this show and for the amount of time that I have to spend on it, uh, I am more than happy to use studio sound and would highly recommend it to a lot of people. So, um, I think, I guess the last thing is all told, typically I would spend on the editing side of things, probably three to four hours per episode, something like that. And then usually there's an additional hour on titling and thumbnail design and some of that kind of stuff. So uh, there's a few other things there, time stamping, things like that. I, I do pull from Descript. Um, but those are, are so all told, yeah, I would say probably four to five hours per episode outside of recording. Uh, recording takes an hour, hour and a half per episode, something like that. Um, a lot of that's just like catching up with Justin or a lot of that kind of extra half hour, but it's also kind of setting up the episode. So um, yeah, that uh, it doesn't really feel like it, but it probably does take seven hours per episode, something like that, all told. Um, and then there's, I mean, on top of that, there's then another hour writing the email, but I write every day anyway. So that kind of time needs to happen. So we could even bump that up to, yeah, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that each episode takes eight to nine hours all told. Um, that time is often spread out and batched in, in various ways, but um, that would probably be where where I would think about the, the time would come in on a per episode basis. So uh, I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any additional questions about the production, uh, anything else that we're doing with the video or the audio. Like I said, I was quite pleased to see that um, our setup here, specifically with Descript and Squadcast, both tools that I already had, and then being able to create these frames in Figma and just overlay them, that added such a nice touch to the production quality that I was very impressed with what we were able to achieve with, um, you know, a small budget, um, not a, I mean, there is certainly some time commitment here, but the editing, uh, to me, that's always kind of what I have in my mind as typical editing time for a one hour episode is usually two to three times how long the episode is. So in my mind, if this was audio only, I could probably edit it in two hours, maybe two and a half hours, uh, maybe maybe two hours probably with the additional video it's probably going to be three depending on what we're doing if there's more editing moving content around eliminating big chunks things like that um, then it might be be even four but um, yeah I've been been very pleased with how everything's gone so far and I in my mind had uh, you know my my friend Jay Klaus uh, with his show creator science uh, I know that he has invested a year and a large amount of money into the production quality, both into his studio, but also on an ongoing basis. I'm pretty sure I've heard him say the uh, typical YouTube video is like several thousand dollars to produce, which I certainly do not have the budget for for this show. And also the time expense in terms of the number of people who are working on that show um, is not something that I have access to either. Uh, and so I was worried that that was the only that you needed to be at that bar of quality 
in terms of support and time and, and quality and investment and all these things. Uh, I know it took him a year of investing super heavily before he had a video go viral into the multiple millions of views, really grew the channel and things have been much better since. But I was a little bit worried, like, is this the only way that podcasters can be successful on YouTube? And it's not like we have a ton of views or followers yet on YouTube um, with with the show or anything else. But we've been getting really great feedback. The word of mouth has, has started to kick in. People have been talking about it. People come up to me at conferences, uh, send emails about at the roasts and the videos. And so um, those are obviously early signs to me that like what we're doing is is good enough um, to have an impact on people to get the the point across the things that we want to share and that there's certainly potential for for more growth and it's a kind of green light positive indicator that hey this can can work and there's value here so um, hopefully this has been helpful and uh, let me know if you have any questions and i'll talk to you more real soon